When I shine, darkness fades. I simultaneously love and hate the fact that episode 12 ended on such an epic cliffhanger, teasing us with just the appearance of Zero One Shining Hopper. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Let's leave the critique of Shining Hopper's debut fight for next week. Today, I want to talk about three key questions and or mysteries that episode 12 has given us. First, what in the world is Zaya's goal? Considering Guy and Yuwa's actions, it seems they want hidden intelligence to collapse. But rather than that being their true goal, it's more like they are using the risk of collapse as a threat to try and obtain hidden intelligence, as seen from episode 11 when Guy offered to buy the company from Aruto. Now, what exactly would this achieve? Well, Zaya would probably obtain all of Hiden's assets, including the Humor Gear Control Satellite Zaya and all the Progress Key data it contains, which, according to Guy, is the key to reviving the Ark. Now, the interesting part is this. Both Zaya and Matsubo Jin Rai seem to share the goal of reviving the Ark, and it feels like they're in a race to see who can gather enough data to revive it first. Guy plans to do so by acquiring Hiden Intelligence's Progress Key data, while Horobi is trying to do the same with Zetsume Rai's key data. Obviously, Horobi wants to revive the Ark because the Ark is their literal boss. We know from episode 8 that the Ark is what judged mankind as deserving of extinction, and it can also serve as a platform for mass hacking of Humor Gear. But why does Zaya want the Ark? Honestly, with the current scummy mega corporation feel they have now, I wouldn't be surprised if they just want the Ark for personal profit and gain, using it to dominate the tech market. Of course, they could have more malicious goals such as world domination. On that note, another thing I'm curious about is Guy's position within Zaya. We know he is the CEO or President Director of Zaya Enterprise Japan, but doesn't that imply that Zaya is an international company with a HQ located elsewhere? So is Guy acting on his own or is he following orders from Zaya's true leader or leaders? There is just so much we don't know and it's possible that Guy is only the bottom or middle rung of the ladder that Aruto will have to face. Second. Why is the 5th festival humor gear roaming free? Like, I get that a group of thieves stole the 5 festival humor gears and customized them all to have the assassination humor gears face. I also get that Metsubo Jinrai stole 4 of them, most likely from wherever the thieves sold them to. But what about the 5th? Did it escape from thieves? Did it escape from Metsubo Jinrai? And why does it have its original programming intact? Did it escape before it could be hacked or modified? Which would be cool as a mini reference to the original Kamen Rider's origin story. But the important thing is this. We know that the current assassination humor gear was the 4th festival humor gear. Let's call him number 4. After developing free will and mastering the art of assassination, he chose to leave Metsubo Jinrai and start acting on his own. And what was the first thing he did? Seek out his old brother, Number 5. So the question is, what is the assassination humor gear's goal now that he has free will? Because honestly, it doesn't look like he's interested in doing any assassination. We probably will find out next episode and this is something I'm really itching to know. Furthermore, I had to question Horobi's motives for creating him in the first place. Like, was there any hidden motives beyond acquiring greater combat strength and potentially using him to assassinate specific targets? Why didn't Horobi simply reset him like he did to Jin when Jin developed free will? And finally, in the first place, how and why did the assassination humor gear develop and mature so quickly, especially compared to Jin? Third, what exactly are the progress keys? From the beginning of the series, I never really questioned the usage of the term key. I mean, it made sense and nothing about the actual object seemed notably relevant to the idea of a key. But in episode 12, in Shining Hopper's Henshin animation, we see the Shining Hopper key literally being used as a key. So the question is, what does this mean? What is it that the keys unlock? Is it just the idea of gaining access to the animal combat data and satellite Zaya, or is there something more implied here? Because there must be a reason why Shining Hopper's animation has the unlock mechanism while the basic keys don't. In addition, the detective Humagear was 
tried to warn Aruto against using Shining Hopper as well. Does he know something about it that we don't? Perhaps something Aruto's grandfather told him? Or was it just the bad feeling he mentioned having? Are there consequences associated with the use of Shining Hopper? Because another very salient feature of the Shining Hopper transformation is that Aruto himself seemed to grow more muscular and I don't think it was just the suit growing thicker. Furthermore, instead of the suit combining with animal data to form pieces of armor as usual, Shining Hopper's transformation looked like it captured the animal data and fused it directly with Aruto himself. Instead of equipping onto Zero One's suit, Shining Hopper's armor seemed to grow out of the suit somehow. I don't know what this all means, but it gives me an ominous feeling. There is, there has to be an important reason why Shining Hopper's transformation is so different compared to the basic ones, and we don't know it yet. One random thought I came up with is that the Shining Hopper key directly injects Hopper DNA or combat data into the user's brain and or body, and this temporarily alters the user's biological structure to increase combat potential, increasing muscle mass, streamlining nerve connections, etc. to make the user stronger and faster. Of course, this is incredibly unethical and probably has dire consequences on the user's body with repeated use, so the unlocking during the animation could represent an overriding of the belt's normal safety limiters to access forbidden power, if you will. Those are the three important questions I wanted to talk about today. I'm literally on the edge of my seat waiting to see what will be revealed in the next episode and the rest of this second story arc. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it and let me know what you guys think about the episode in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more Kamen Rider and Tokusatsu related content and I'll see you guys in the next Kamen Rider 01 video.